Hey, my name is Jesus Castello from rubyguides.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to create your own Ruby gem. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to create our files. So similar to what you will do to create a new Rails application, we also have a command to create a new Ruby gem. And the command is bundle gem and then the name of the gem. So in this case, I'm going to name my gem best Ruby gem. Okay. So there we go. And you might recognize this output is very similar to what Rails does. But in this case, we're just creating a Ruby gem. So I'm going to cd change directory into this new folder that Bonder has created for us. And if I use the tree command, we're going to see the directory structure, the files and folders that we're working with. So we have a few important files like this one, this gem spec. So this, the, the format is the name of the gem and then just spec. So this file is very important as we are going to see in a moment because it has things like the gem description, the gem author, so that's your name, the gem um, contact address, so your email address so people can email you to for support or questions about the gem, things like that. And it also has another important section about dependencies. So we are going to open the file in a moment and go over these details. So we have a few other um, folders. Gem file. We don't need. We don't need to change the gem file. So in a Rails application, you put your gems in a gem file, but in a gem, you put the gems that you're going to use in the gem spec. Okay, so that's one important difference. Now, where does your own code go? The actual code for the gem? Well, that goes inside the lib folder or directory. So we have two files. Um, so don't confuse this. We have, this is a folder because it has an extension and it has files below it. And this folder, has this version file. So the only, the only purpose, the only job of this version file is to actually have the version number for your gem. And where you set this version number is in that file. Now we also have this best rubygem.rb. That's the main file for your gem. That's where your Ruby code goes. And of course you can create more, more, more files and folders if you want. Then we have a rig file, a readme. That's where you explain what your gem is all about and provide examples. It's always good to provide examples of how to use the gem. And if your gem produces some kind of report output on the screen, then it's also good to have a screenshots, okay? It's more likely that people are going to use your gem if you have a screenshots. That's it if your gem is something that produces some kind of report or or maybe you even have some kind of graphical interface, okay? And finally, we have another folder for test. So you can write your gem TDD style if you want, or you, you can just have test after the fact if you want to. So that's the folder and file structure for a jam. Now let's go, let's open this in my editor, which is Atom. And let's go over these files in a little bit more detail. Let's see the contents of these files, okay? So let's go over this gem spec file first because I think this is one of the most important files in a gem. And this stuff 
I'm high. You don't have to change or worry about or think about even. The only thing this is doing is loading, loading the files under the lib directory, okay? So it's including your files under lib, okay? And it's also requiring your version gem. Now we have the gem specification new, and this the whole file, the rest of the file is this block. Okay, so we have the name of the gem, the version which comes from that file. So let's let's look at the file for a moment. So this is the version. You can see it's very very simple. It's just a module with the name of the gem and this constant version. And here we can change the version name if we want to. Let's go back to a gem spec that has the author name and you can have, as you can see, this an array. So you can have multiple authors. So if you're working in an open source project, it's possible to just add the other person name that's working with you. Okay. Then you have your email address there. Um, you can change it if you want. For example, there. Um, then we have a summary. As you have, as you can see, you we have to change this because we get some placeholder text. So let's add short summary. This is the best gem ever. How about that? <laughs> Then write a longer description or delete this line. So this one is optional. If you don't have a longer description, there is no need to repeat the summary. Okay, so as you can see it says or delete this line. So we can delete it if we don't have a long description for our jam. So there we go. The home page. So this home page we can put the if you have a website for your jam. That's where you put it. Or you can put the repo URL if you want. Okay, so that's where you will put that. I believe this is also optional. But for this, let's just put the URL of the block. Now next, um, okay, so this thing right here is for if you want to publish your gem in a local repository like this, or you want to because you can you can have like your own private gems, okay? If you don't want to have public gems, you can have your private gems. Or you can publish your gem to rubygems.org and everyone can benefit from using your gem. So that's what this blog is all about. Then the next part is about files. So this we find all of the files in your project. So and put them into, into the gem when we package the gem because the gem just one file when you when we build build it. I'm going to show you how to build your gem so it becomes one file that then you can publish in rubygems.org or your private um, gem server. So for that, rubygems needs to know what files you want inside the gem. Okay, this is the Vin there. So this, if you have like a command, like pry, pry is a gem, right? But it has a command you can type. So it, you can do something with it. So that comes from this bin, this binary directory, right? Binary directory. And it, it's this one. This is the name. 
Then executables, this is the files inside this folder. And require paths, this is the where your files are coming from. And finally, we have dependencies. So remember who I mentioned that you don't put your dependencies on the gem file in a gem, you put them in the gem spec. So if we want to add a new one, we do it like that. Okay. That's how you add a development dependency. And if you want a dependency that's available on the, for everyone for the project, not just for development, you do it like that. You remove the development part. So let's say you want to use like Nokogiri or something. You will do it like that. Okay. And then when someone installs your gem, um, it will also install the dependencies that you specify there. So that's the jump spec, as you can see, it's a pretty important file when creating a gem. Your main, this is your main file for your code. As you can see, they, they give you this comment, so you know where to put your code. Your code goes here, it's pretty clear. And that's where you put what you want to do with your gem what you want to happen when someone uses your gem. We said you can see it's a module. So in here we can have a method or we can have our own class, which is under this um, namespace. So if I do best Ruby gem um, guide, for example, then the way to access that will be best Ruby gem um, colon colon guide. But let's say that all the gen is going to do is uh, uh, print something. So let's call this print and put hello. <laughs> How about that? Now we can build the gem and you do that with gem build and you need to give this um, the gem name so you can see plus specify a gem name so let's do that uh, okay so it's Say, saying that we have an invalid spec, so let's go back to the spec, and we are missing the protocol where it is required. So let's do that, and there we go, it's working. We have our gem successfully built Ruby gem name, best Ruby gem <laughs> version 0.1.0. .1 .0. And file best Ruby gem dot gem. Okay, so that's there is our gem, and now we can install it. You don't need to push it, push it, or publish it to rubygems.org to actually be to, to use it. You can use the gem file to install it. So you can do gem install this. Now we have it, one gem install, and if we go to something like Pry, we can use it. So to use it, we use best Ruby gem, we include this, and of course, it doesn't work for some reason. Uh, that's interesting. Of course, we need to require it first. <laughs> if we don't require it, that's, it's going to be hard to use it. There we go. 
so there is our best ruby gem now we can include it and use it there is our print method and our output hello <laughs> so that's how you make your own ruby gems okay so i hope you found this useful interesting if you did please give me a like you can click the like button below and i also want you to subscribe to the channel so you can receive notifications when i publish new videos for you so you can keep improving your ruby skills so thanks a lot for watching see you in another video